Hi, my name is Roy Neiswanger. Today I'm going to be describing and uh, uh, producing a tutorial on how to build a do-it-yourself ring light um, uh, for digital SLR photography. I use this exclusively for macro photography, uh, but it's also known as a beauty dish in uh, model and studio photography, so it can be used for that as well. Uh, this is a very slick design, um, not my original idea. There's a person on Flickr who uh, outlined a tutorial with uh, lots of pictures and uh, build materials on how to build this, so uh, I took his idea, uh, of course made a few modifications, and I'd like to bring it to everyone uh, here in video form uh, on YouTube. It's real simple. This is a shop light. It's aluminum shop light shade. <clears throat> this tube here and the inside right here is a 4 to 5 inch vent reducer. Um, this is a 580 EX Canon Speedlight Flash. This is a one and a quarter inch cold uh, steel stock galvanized. Um, this is a Canon 30D off cord, uh, off flash sync cord from the uh, hot shoe to the flash. Um, essentially I just uh, pop rivet. You can see here uh, the uh, bracket that I bent in my vise uh, to the uh, shade assembly. The way I mounted the uh, uh, the shade to the four uh, to five inch or five to four inch reducer is by cutting the shade out and uh, placing the vent uh, vent reducer through um, using JB Weld and sanding it flat and priming it. Uh, this is Chef Mate cutting mat um, diffusing material that I have zip tied to the rim here around the rain flash. Um, and uh, there are a few minor details left out, but hopefully I'll address them throughout the rest of this tutorial. Thanks. Okay, let's start with a uh, spread of all the materials, parts, uh, supplies, and tools required for this do-it-yourself rain flash build. Uh, so let's get to it. First of all, this is a 4 to 5 inch galvanized vent reducer. Uh, the only place that does uh, 5 to 4 inch vent reducer is Home Depot in my area. The Lowe's did not sell them. This is about a $6 part. Next critical part, of course, is the aluminum uh, shop light shade. Um, you got to buy the whole kit. This actually comes with, with the light socket and stuff inside of it. This is a $10 purchase. We're going to use this for the primary uh, shade for the uh, ring flash. Again, this was uh, Home Depot and it was about $10. This is the uh, one and a quarter inch bar stock. Um, it's galvanized, three foot bar stock. I want to say this was about $7. can't remember the exact price. Um, but I'll detail the item numbers uh, in a bill of material list at the end of this tutorial. So that's the material we'll need. Also, this is uh, some type of uh, uh, vent flashing tape. I've had this for a really long time. It just says United Tape, tape Company inside, but it's very reflective. And the reason why I want to use this is because <clears throat> this will be on the inside and I actually put the tape around around this part so <clears throat> when it's sitting inside like this of course it's flush going all the way through um, and the flash goes off and reflects around here it reflects off of this tape a lot better than the outside of this vent reducer we're also going to want JB Weld find at any uh, hardware store uh, a Dremel uh, hacksaw here's another disposable material um, uh, that we'll need to use. This is the ChefMate cutting mat. It's 11 and a half inch by 15. There's green, red, um, yellow, and of course the uh, uh, the white, which we'll use for the uh, diffuser on the uh, face of the do-it-yourself ring flash. Uh, a drill and uh, drum sander, just for some of the areas where you need to uh, uh, sand off the jagged edges so they're not sharp. You're going to want primer and flat black, uh, unless you want to walk around with a big shiny uh, uh, shade on, uh, you know, attached to your camera. So that'll help protect it as well. Uh, I use this foam sanding paper to sand the JB Weld down, something a little more coarse than that. Scissors for the, uh, for the diffuser, uh, a Sharpie. That's when we're gonna go over it like this. Outline the hole, cut the hole, and then pop this guy through. JB Weld sand, prime and all that. Pop rivet, steel pop rivets, steel with uh, with washers. 
um, and of course a drill. I saw a little test sample here, this foam. I used contact cement and this uh, hobby foam. Uh, you can find it at most hobby, Michaels, and uh, that's what you put on the top of the, uh, the steel uh, to, uh, to protect the ring, or not the ring flash, but protect the camera and also keep the camera from uh, shifting left and right. Okay, first of all, I knew I left something out in the uh, material introduction of this tutorial. Uh, tin snips, uh, metal shears, so you're going to need a pair of those. So here's the first step in the production of this do-it-yourself ring flash. I'm going to take my Sharpie marker here, and I don't care, I don't, you know, if I'm sloppy, that's okay, because I'm going to be sanding and cutting and priming and whatnot. But um, the objective here is to get this centered over that small hole here, and we're going to trace that out, okay? So I'm going to set this here, right around the center, and you can kind of tell from the rings on either side, uh, you know, if you're, if you're centered nice, you do want to hold it down and then trace it out. Just like so. Here we are. Here's the trace out, okay? Now, uh, probably just going to start cutting just like this, okay? And you want to cut on the inside of this line, okay? So you want the hole slightly smaller. This is very malleable metal. It's just lightweight aluminum. So then you're going to find a steady surface and you're going to set this over and you're going to press and pop it through to where this edge is flush with this edge on a flat surface. Okay? Okay, I'm going to start the cutting process here. Okay, cut a wedge there and then I'm going to start cutting all the way around. Okay? Okay, as you can see, I started cutting around uh, just on the inside of this marker line. Uh, folks, there's one thing I did leave out in the beginning here is uh, safety. Uh, be very careful. I'm using these leather gloves because uh, you can easily cut yourself on this fresh cut aluminum. Uh, wear safety, uh, safety glasses or goggles whenever you're drilling or using any of the rotary tools. So be very careful. Have fun. We go. Okay, as you can see, I cut out the uh, hole here, and uh, it is certainly uh, smaller than the actual size of the uh, four inch end of the reducer. And uh, I already tried popping it through, and it's really a little too tight in this case. So, this is where the rotary tool and the uh, drum sander on a uh, drill on high RPM. We're going to go ahead and shave some of this off here and uh, try to make it a little smaller or actually larger. Okay, um, I just uh, used the uh, sanding drum and made it a little wider to pop that vent reducer through just like such. Okay, so next step is I'll Put the tape on here first, pop it through, sand here so it's got some area to bite, and put um, JB Weld all around this seam. And I'll also put a little bit of JB Weld on the inside seam there too, and let it set up, sand flat, prime, paint all of this black, and the inside of this will be painted, painted black uh, later down the road. Okay, now here is the vent reducer with all of the required steps uh, completed prior to mounting to the shade. It's very important you do these steps before mounting it to the shade. Uh, one of the steps, prime and black paint on the inside of the vent reducer. And then all the way up to this first rib here, um, you want to put the reflective aluminum foil tape through here, okay? Now what I also did is I, I put a pop rivet from the inside, this is the flat part, and then the nipple protrudes right here in three equal, equally spaced spots on the very edge. Keep the diffuser in place once we uh, uh, do that step with the diffuser.